is what I eat every day. Cup of beans. Is breakfast, lunch, dinner, beans. All different types of beans. Black beans, kidney beans, baked beans, pinto beans, refried beans. I eat beans. That's what I do. I live good, I eat good, we eat real healthy, canned beans, bean life. I'm Mike Black, and I'm giving up everything during a global pandemic. The world economy has been crippled by COVID, but with the right mindset, we can get through this. I believe right now is one of the best times to reinvent yourself, and so I'm putting everything on the line to prove it. I drained my bank account to zero dollars, got rid of all my belongings, and I cut off my entire network. I walked away from my seven-figure business, and I'm now going by the name Scott. I'll have 12 months to build a new business and go from zero to a million dollars. This is the million dollar comeback. You have to just put stuff out there. <laughs> it's starting to really hit me. I don't know what else to tell you. Just a lot more work to do. Hey guys, I know that we said that doing a recap at the office was gonna be a one-time thing, but you guys liked it a lot, we liked it a lot, so we're gonna do it again in this video. So in last week's video, we got this new office. Yeah! It was great because now we have a good place to work, access to great internet, access to good computers, so now we can focus on building our business. Let's go do it! Yeah! <laughs> so in the first two weeks of this project, we actually didn't put it in the last video, but I did decide to try to start a business. All right, update time. <laughs> I figured right now could potentially be a really good time to start a cleaning business. So what I've been spending all day today doing is finding mentors. I join a lot of Facebook groups um, for people that run cleaning companies. The thought process behind this was, Okay, well, with everything that's going on with COVID, I'd assume that both residential and commercial clients might be investing a lot of money into cleaning. There's a lot of things I don't know about this type of business. They can help me figure those things out. So what I wanna do is share with you exactly how I go about validating a business idea so you can go and validate whatever business it is that you're trying to start. All right, so let's talk about validating your idea. Now, before we get started, there's a lot more that I'm gonna cover in this video that goes into validating your idea. Um, really what you wanna do is be creating an MVP, doing customer discovery, getting people to pay for your service. I should rename this and call this industry insights, which is like the high, high, high level of validation. So the three steps that I took to doing this is step number one, network with industry experts. Step number two, do a bunch of Google research. And step number three, leverage tools. So starting with step number one, finding industry experts. I was looking to start a cleaning business, so I joined all of these cleaning business Facebook groups. Cleaning Business World, Cleaning Business Profits, Commercial Cleaning Mastermind Group. I was curious how everyone's business has been doing since COVID had hit. I wanted to know, did they make more money? Did they make less money? What'll happen if another wave of COVID hits if I start this business? Another great place to go is actual local startup groups. So here's one in Austin. It's called Austin Startups. People in here wanna help other people. So I look at um, people that run 500,000 revenue companies, seven figure companies, eight figure companies. All I do to, is I get their email address and I send them a cold email and pretty much ask them to mentor me. Okay, so the next step is leveraging Google and doing research on Google. So I'll just type like cleaning business average profit margin. We can see here that's like pretty healthy if it's between that range. What I'll also do is I'll go to a site called bizbuysell.com. This is a site for buying and selling businesses. And I'll look, what can cleaning businesses actually sell for? I'll look up their financials. So like, for example, this business right here, they're asking 1.75 million. Now that doesn't mean they'll sell for that much, but what I really wanna see is their cash flow and their revenue. So this company did 4.6 million in revenue and their net profit or their cash flow was 4, uh, 436,000. So it's about a 10% operating. It's actually a little bit less. I'll just go through a bunch of listings. Again, I'll, I'll look to see what, what are these businesses selling for, et cetera. Okay, so after doing a lot of research on Google, the next thing I'll do is I'll use certain tools. So the first one I wanna want talk about is SEM Rush. What I'll do is I'll go to Google and I'll type something like residential cleaning company and I'll find a website that I wanna research. So I use this website here and I go to SEMrush.com and put it in here. So I can see the actual traffic to this site over a period of time. Now you can see when COVID hit, in January, you can see this huge downtick. It kind of recovers a little bit, then it goes down again. 
Now, that doesn't mean that this one company is a reflection of all residential cleaning services, but I kept looking into more and more businesses and realizing that they were getting hit really hard um, from COVID. So it's a great way to like really get a, a good insight of the actual traffic being driven to a, a site. If it were an, a huge upswing, then we'd be like, oh my God, maybe we should jump on this. I really like SEM Rush for like a good starting point. Um, but I'll use the Google Keyword Planner. You go in there, I typed in Hire Cleaning Company, and you can see the amount of searches every single month. And then lastly, I'll go to the Google Trends tool. I'm not gonna show you how to use it. It's super straightforward. You just go to trends.google.com, and you type in whatever keyword, and you can see the actual trend. Is it an uptick? Is it a downtick? Is it flat? Personally, I would like to pursue businesses that have an upward tick. So like, if we just type in TikTok, we can see TikTok has a big upward tick here in terms of the trends tool. So this is a really, really, really good first step in figuring out if your business is worth pursuing or not. I hope that was helpful. Ultimately, these tools really helped me to make a decision not to pursue that business, which is a huge win for me because if I hadn't done that research and then found out after the fact that a cleaning business is not a good business to start right now, I could be in a little bit of trouble three, four, five months into this project. So now the only downside is what business do I start? Oh shit, Nariko just asked me for a portfolio. So now I'm starting from scratch and I'm still left with a Chromebook that's really slow and it was really frustrating the hell out of me. Ugh, dude, I'm so sick of this. F me. So I decided I need to get a better computer. All right, so we're taking a lift uh, downtown. I found a laptop, bought a Facebook marketplace. Okay, cool, he's arriving now. Uh-oh, doesn't sound good. Um, so I'm just pumped to go grab it and uh, I'll be able to like use this software and stuff. So lift's here, let's let's go pop over. How's it going? Heading to Kava to meet up with him. I like going to public places if I'm gonna like do a transaction. I love Kava. If you're in Austin, eat at Kava. But yeah, I mean, he's able to negotiate this down like a little bit. Uh, it's a Dell, which is pretty solid. Thanks and eight gigs RAM, so it's pretty cool. What's up? We both work at the film school. This is cool if he films. I was so happy with this Dell that I messaged him yesterday, and I was like, dude, thank you so much. Like, I love this computer. And he was like laughing. He's like, yeah, sorry. Like, I wasn't cool with filming and stuff. I could tell that you guys thought that, that was like really weird, but. Did you like, drive out there and then have to turn off the cameras? Yeah, once we got over to him, he's like, we're like, hey man, like, can we film this? He's like, no. <laughs> just turn it off. So then we're all, I was like, okay, that's fine. And then he's like walking me through the, the <laughs> he's walking me through the, the computer. And I'm like, what's, um, like, is there any issues with it? Like, has it had viruses? He sold this for a hundred bucks. What happened was his wife definitely slammed the computer or like threw it at him and it's all bunked up. Dude, is that thing, is that thing crooked? Yeah, it's a total piece of garbage. This hinge is, I don't know if you can like see it, but the, it's totally crooked. <laughs> so I get this Dell, brand new, brand new used Dell. Little cosmetic damage. Got a nice little crack right here. I don't know if you can see that. Got a nice little crack. But yeah, no one judges a book by its cover. If you do, you're wrong. Brand new, used Dell computer. We're in Austin. We We're in Austin. Dell. Dell office right down the street. If I have any issues with the Dell, walk over to Dell's office, say, hey man, Hey, Mr. Michael Dell, uh, what's up with this computer? He'll get it fixed for me, we're good to go. We got this now, baby, so now it's time to put this thing to work. All right, so now I have a new computer, thank God. Now I have to figure out like, okay, I need to start making money. So I started really gravitating towards social media marketing roles, and the more and more that I interviewed, I realized the value is really in offering TikTok services. TikTok is a new platform. There's a lot of opportunity for growth. And if you're an early adopter on TikTok, you can really take a lot of advantage of that and build a pretty big business around it. I was really, really excited to start my TikTok agency. And then a couple things happened and I wasn't able to pursue it. So the first thing is a company called Camp TikTok reached out to me to do an interview. They had found the million dollar comeback TikTok. They shot me a message and said, hey, can you come on an interview? Why don't you give us the brief overview of what you're doing? Because I think it's a super interesting story. Right now, at the, the time of, of this recording, I have $30 in my bank account, so <laughs> <laughs> we're just getting by. <laughs> the reason you caught my eye is I had this idea, um, and I always love, I'm sure it's happened to you multiple times probably in your life as well, when you have an idea, but you don't, you don't do it, right? I mean, there's just 
we have limited bandwidth, limited capacity, all of us, every single one. Mm-hmm. And But then you see somebody else doing it. Um, so I just wanted to have you on because I think it's just a fantastic idea. Doesn't make it easy, but it's a fantastic idea. <laughs> <laughs> I went on the interview. It was awesome. We had a really good time. and actually helped me a lot to learn more about the platform and get better at using TikTok. Um, and I wouldn't have had that relationship if it weren't for Million Dollar Comeback. Um, so I was like, damn, I really don't think I can keep building a TikTok agency. The second thing that happened is we've had a lot of craziness on the Million Dollar Comeback team since we've started. We've been moving really fast and we just fired our third social media team member. So we needed to hire someone else. So I started looking at the people that have applied to work with us and one of the applicants is actually a TikTok influencer. What's up, bro? What's going on, man? How you doing? This is the spot that we just moved into, so it's kind of cool. How's the week going? It's going great, yeah. I have 30 bucks in my bank account right now, so it's, uh, it's a little crazy. I really like this kid, he's a lot of potential. So the entire meeting, we talked about how to structure his business, his business model, um, how to start getting big brands as clients like Taco Bell. Um, I even wrote some cold emails for him. And we had a really fun meeting. I really like him as a person. Hopefully after this project, we could potentially work together um, on a TikTok agency, but unfortunately, cards fell the way they fell. I'll uh, give you a call. Like later tonight, we can like finish figuring out like how we can work together. 100%. Take it easy, man. Later, dude. Peace. So all of these things happening got me to the point where I was like, I cannot pursue a TikTok agency. It's too much of an unfair advantage. I have to figure out a different business to start. So that's two businesses. I put a lot of work in, a lot of time. Neither have worked out. This is not good. I don't have a lot of money in my bank account, and I really need to figure things out. So in the meantime, it's back to flipping. All right, guys, I just, I flipped a couch. I just flipped a couch. Um, I wish I could have recorded the combo. Um, the problem, though, is that the person that is picking it up is not picking up till 7 p.m. Eastern. So what that means is I'm about to take the bus to the office on a one-way trip, hoping that that person actually shows up, pays, and then the guy pays me. If he doesn't, I'm going to be screwed. I think I only have $2.17 in my bank account. A bus pass is $2.50. A one-way trip, though, is $1.25. So I have enough money to get to the office, but I do not have enough money to get back. All right, I, I just threw on clothes and so I could run to the bus and there's a fucking like salamander lizard thing in my fucking clothes. It's right on the back right there. That thing is like hanging out. Ooh. Oh, what the f- it's in my clothes. What do I do? What the f- do I do? I'm like crunch for time. I gotta run to the bus and there's a fucking. I feel like ev- I'm getting every curveball. Like every curveball in this project that could be thrown so far has been thrown. And these things poisonous? Like I don't even know what the f- to do. Uh, where is it? Fuck. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh, by the way, this just started today. You ready? You ready? I have to run out this door because there's a, like 20 bees. Watch this. Probably gonna get stung. Ready? scared. All right, three, two. Oh, unreal. All right, here we go, bus. F- this. I took a big risk. And I decided to buy the one-way bus pass. And I think at that point, my bank account, my bank account was under a dollar. All right, so I'm heading to the bus. Really hope this person I sold the couch to doesn't screw me over and Venmo's me or else I'm sleeping in the office tonight, I guess. I have 91 cents in my bank account right now. 91 cents. Um, it's a little flip of couch, so I got 50 bucks. So I can get get back, back get back home. Um, the so tired, jeez. Oh. What was I just saying? Yeah. I need to start eating better. It's like fing my brain up. Alright guys, update time. Um I I screwed up today and uh I was on a call with our video editor and I missed the bus. I have fifty bucks 
And I have a couple options. Option one is I sleep here at the office. <laughs> option two is I call Lyft and spend 10 bucks. And option three is I could hit up Isaac, but I like feel bad and don't want to do that. So my question is in the comments, let me know, what would you do? Option one, sleep at the office. Option two, call Lyft for 10 bucks or option three, hit up uh, your roommate. Let me know. Uh, I took the lift. So this week did not pan out how I had hoped, but a lot of good things did happen. I put a job on Upwork. I knew this like would go well. I, I wrote like I'm, I run an e-commerce marketing company and I'm looking to start like Facebook ad services. So I'm hiring like a Facebook expert. Although I really wanted to start a TikTok agency, I realized the money might be in paid ads. So I started doing some research and came to the realization I could just start an e-commerce marketing company. To apply, you must have like spent over a million dollars on Facebook ads the last two years. What's Here's what's funny, I don't even know the services yet. They're gonna tell me pretty much what I am. Like when I'm starting a business like this, I'm just the fucking sales guy, but I'm more than that because I'm building a business out of it. From the beginning, I wanted to start an e-commerce company, but the issue is I need cash to invest into a business like that. Like if you wanna go do this, this is where it's a good point part. If you wanna do the same exact thing, this isn't rocket science, right? Like there's the business and there's the fulfillment. If I'm starting an Amazon marketing company and I don't know Amazon, I'm the business person. There's someone that's the fulfillment, the technical, that really knows Amazon marketing really well. I need to find that person. If you're that person, go find the business person that can actually grow your business. You can start any, I run a development agency. I've never written a line of code in my life and we did seven figures in sales last year. I've never written a single line of code in my life. I don't know anything about running Facebook ads. I don't know how to start an Amazon store, but I can hire people that know those things. Here's the, the best part. If this individual turns out to not be like the perfect person to be like running that part of your org, that's fine. Now you can go and hire more people. I can hire people that can do the technical and the fulfillment and we can start generating cash flow. And then once we kind of build up our marketing agency, I can finally start my e-com business. One thing I want to make really clear to all of you watching right now is right now, right now I'm losing. I'm way further behind than I wanted to, to be by day 20. I have like 30 bucks in, the, in my bank account. I'm losing right now. But again, it's part of the process. It is part of this game. If you can't lose and keep going, then man, you have a tough road ahead of you because you're going to take a lot of losses. My question for you is, are you willing to take those losses? Are you willing to struggle? Because that's what this takes, baby. Time to get back to work. So I'm all in on starting this e-commerce business. I'm really excited because now I can just focus on growing that business and nothing else. Now we just have to find the right talent, hire them, and then it's off to the races. No more couches. I'm still flipping couches. <laughs> <laughs>